Hello, my name is Vadim Sakov, and I'm going to present a talk called Millimeter Wave System and Circuit Design for Highly Integrated Radio Transceivers. The outline of the talk is as follows. I will give a brief introduction, then I'm going to talk about radio system considerations, then I'm going to discuss semiconductor technologies, then I will discuss radar, circuit design, and I will conclude my talk with outlook and conclusions. The motivation for this talk are radar systems. Compared to other sensing technologies such as infrared, ultrasonic or camera, radar offers many advantages such as it is weather independent, it has very good material penetration properties, it offers privacy, the module size is very compact and so on. When we look at the evolution of radar ICs over the years, we can see that over 10 years ago radar systems were realized using discrete components such as VCO, frequency multipliers, power amplifiers and so on, integrated on a PCB. In the next step, these components were integrated into transmitters and receivers. Next, they were integrated into large complex transceivers. And now there are efforts to integrate the transceivers with microcontrollers. Therefore, CMOS technologies might be very attractive for realization of millimeter wave radar transceivers. Now we're going to discuss system considerations. One of the most popular modulation techniques is the frequency modulated continuous wave radar using fast chirp sequence modulation. A series of fast chirps is transmitted. The ADC samples correspond to the down converted reflected signals are processed and stacked to obtain a 2D raw data matrix. Then Fourier transform is performed on fast time for range information or over chirp number for the loss information. One of the most crucial parts of an FMCW radar system is the analog basement. As seen in previous slide, the collected data is structured in FFT bins. The zero range bin corresponds to distance of zero. This bin is dominated by crosstalk and therefore high pass filter must be added. The corner frequency of the analog basement can be selected such that the radar system can either A. favor close targets or B. equalize the reflected power from the targets up to the maximum distance. The equalization compensates for the 1 over r to the power of 4 attenuation due to the propagation by adding a 40 dB filter to attenuate the closer targets. The system level budget calculation can be demonstrated on the following example. In case of gesture recognition, a typical sensing range is 50 cm. The output power in this case is limited by FCC regulations. The input power into receiver can be calculated as shown in the figure here, and we can see that the input power is about minus 72 dBm. The typical distances of the hand from the cell phone result in the IF frequencies in the range of 8 kHz to 400 kHz. In this case, analog basement that favors closer targets, as we discussed before, makes more sense. Phase noise is one of the crucial parameters of the transceiver. Depending on the sensing range, and because of the phase noise correlation in the near field. Degraded phase noise can result in the scenario that the reflection from a smaller or more distant target can be covered by noisy reflected signal from a larger target. One can try to separate the targets by having a higher IF separation, which can be achieved by faster frequency ramps. At the same time, the bandwidth is limited by the available frequency band and needs to be as large as possible for good range resolution. However, this poses very challenging equipment on PLL to generate fast ramps of wide frequency range and to have a low phase noise VCO at the same time. An alternative modulation technique that poses much more relaxed requirements on the phase noise is the phase modulated continuous wave radar. It uses a single carrier which is phase modulated by digital sequence, for example, pseudo noise code. The received sequences are correlated after down conversion with the original sequence. This way, uh, distance to target can be determined. Digital modulation techniques such as PMCW are most suited to CMOS technologies and have the potential to enable large MIMO arrays thanks to the orthogonal code separation. They are most resistant to interferences and offer much better digital scaling. However, they pose higher challenge on high-speed ADCs that need to be in the range of several gigahertz as opposed to FMCW. 
Next, we are going to talk about semiconductor technologies. As mentioned previously, phase noise is crucial in radio systems. Um, the phase noise of a VCO is dominated by 1 over F noise, which is in turn dominated by the used device. Flicker noise corner frequency of a bipolar transistor is typically in the range of few kilohertz, while that of a mouse transistor is in the range of megahertz. For a range well below 10 meters, which is the case for the Jesha Sensen, the maximum IF, the intermediate frequency, is between few kilohertz and few megahertz. One or F corner frequency of the receiver should be below the minimum expected IF. This also results in a higher noise figure, if this is not the case. To shift IF above the corner frequency of the CMOS receiver, one can use faster FMCW ramp, which results in turn in a more aggressive PLL design. The speed of the modern technology can be evaluated by maximum oscillation frequency. Modern by CMOS technologies offer very high Fmax in the range of 600 GHz with a relaxed lithographic feature. However, CMOS technologies achieve Fmax in the range of 300 GHz, which enables realization of millimeter wave radar even at D-band. The higher the ratio of Fmax to the operating frequency, the better electrical performance can be achieved, such as lower power consumption, and one can achieve larger design margins. Millimeter wave chips are dominated by, by the RF area independently of the CMOS node. So the distance between the channels influences the insulation and it does not scale with the technology node. Additionally, the distance between the channels can be dominated uh, or determined by the separation of the balls on the, on the package. Therefore, using a pure millimeter wave IC for FMCW is likely not to be influenced by the lower CMOS technology node. Therefore, a combination of say G front-end for millimeter wave part and CMOS digital baseband can be reasonable. Next, we're going to talk about circuit design. We see here an example block diagram of a 122 GHz FMCW radar transceiver. It consists of three receive channels, one transmit channel, and LO distribution. The same power amplifier can be used for BPSK modulation if we would like to combine radar and communication. Additionally, this transceiver includes um, built-in self-test functionality to monitor operation in real time. Additionally, this transceiver includes SPI interface to digitally program um, the, and reconfigure this chip. Schematics of mixer and power amplifiers are presented here. Mixer is based on modified Gilbert cell topology. The RF transconductance stage is replaced by a passive GM cell realized by transmission lines. It converts input voltage into output current and provides high output impedance at the resonance frequency. The power amplifier is based on cascode common base topology. Load line matching is performed to achieve maximum output power and efficiency by means of transmission lines 4, 5, and 6. Another example is 60 GHz FMCW transceiver in 28 nanometer CMOS, which consists of three receive channels, including analog basement, which was designed based on the consideration presented uh, above, two transmit channels, LO distribution, and power management. Very careful biasing has been provided on chip to reduce noise generation, which might be upconverted by VCO to the carrier frequency. Power amplifier is based on pseudo-differential amplifier with neutralization capacitors. The stages are coupled by transformers, which are also used as resonant loads and to provide biasing. More design considerations on circuits will be discussed in the full version of this presentation. Finally, I would like to conclude my talk with outlook and conclusions. The outlook on radar research, in my opinion, goes towards high level of integration in advanced CMOS nodes. A possibility of integrate the RF front-end part together with the uh, analog basement uh, ADCs and also to process the information using neural uh, microprocessors would enable a much more efficient uh, digital signal processing and can save also um, DC power. To sum up, uh, millimeter wave radar research goes nowadays towards higher millimeter wave frequencies due to the wide available bandwidth. Digital modulation techniques offer massive MIMO radar realization due to the possibility of using uh, many orthogonal codes. 
The combination of radar and communication seems to be also the next step in radar research. I thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to give the full talk. Thank you.